Hi there and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program on Duna this time. We got another rover instruction coming up. I'll be taking Guslas into the newest version because well I took a look at the old version and decided it just wasn't going to cut it. There was a, there was some room for improvement, so may I present to you the Scorpion Rover. It's a lot bigger than its previous model. It has space for seven Kerbals instead of just two there is additional SAS on the bottom which is totally safe you can get in quite easy from underneath the newer version will have ladders on the sides there's some solar panels in here I've removed two of the landing legs and flipped them over also protected them with some uh, plating this model has two protected plates instead of one allowing for increased survivability on well any planet as you can see I have gone for another type of suspension which is a lot safer this is the old model which is quite agile let me just break it down there we go toggle the brakes and there we go this is all SAS So it's really quite agile. Right, let's head over to the moon and see the more advanced design. Oh, there we go so we're on the moon right now just as you saw in the first clip of this video there will be a sky crane attachment on top of here which you can easily detach I came in from like 10,000 meters altitude on the moon with like um, 270 meters per second speed the sky crane was able to slow me down without any problems at all have enough fuel left to fly itself off in a little suborbital trajectory and smash itself in the moon therefore removing one piece of debris right so there's still seven place seats for Kerbals over here there's some probe stuff in the front of it there's a lot of batteries as well there's some solar panels which you can toggle with an action group of course I will be explaining all of the available action groups later the advanced model has some wheel cases or whatever you want to call them wheel protection double plated as well there's some additional lights mounted on here you don't really need those but I thought it would be nice to have some lights until you crash them there's also some struts on the outside rather expendable as well I mean they don't really matter all that much but for the time being they are quite useful right so let's get driving let me see let me show you how this one handles on the moon there's a lot of lights on here which is good because in the dark you will not be able to see all that much this model uses the SAS even better than the previous model I have it operational right now if I wanted to I could just walk away right now and return in like five minutes unless you happen to be driving into any major craters you will be driving around without any problem so yeah SAS is quite useful Your, the previous model had SAS as well it had only two SAS reaction wheels instead of three so this one is even more reactive even harder to well it's easier to try and correct your mistakes should you make any either way this one has some action groups on it as well same as the previous model the first action group toggles SES on or off 
and just like the previous model, the Tortoise Rover, 2 will disable the motor in your front wheels. Let me just slow right down in order to actually show you that. There we go, using one of the braking action groups. So yeah, motors disabled on front wheels, let's re-enable them. And action group 3 predictably does the same for the back wheels. Pressing 4 will toggle brakes on the front wheels, just as the last model. And action group 5 will toggle the brakes on the back wheels, which is useful for slowing down if you're in a hurry, like 20 meters per second on the moon. If you were to do that, for instance, without using only the, bra the back brakes, or all the brakes for that matter. And let's get up to an acceptable speed. Yeah, that should do it. Break and you will flip over. Thankfully with the SAS you can correct that, but using action group 5 you shouldn't have to be able. You shouldn't have to correct yourself. Right, action group 6 instead of the old model where it used to toggle liquid fuel engines, which you may notice this model doesn't have anymore, it toggles the solar panels. At the moment there's a eclipse going on. Kerbin is in front of the sun, so we're not getting any power. But this model is really, really power efficient. Yeah, status blocked by Kerbin. Right. Final addition, Action Group 7 toggles ladders. I'll be moving the ladders a little bit, because when climbing onto the ladders, the solar panels tend to break. So in the version that you will be receiving, the ladders will be in a different place. And I've decided to move some of the probe gear a little bit up so that when you have th three kerbals sitting in the front you can still use all the probe equip equipment without any difficulties so yeah this is basically a look at the improved scorpion rover the name kind of well inspired by one of the tanks in the halo universe you might have seen it i think it looks quite a bit alike except there's no turret on top of here anyway leave your thoughts in the comments leave a like on youtube if you like this video subscribe if you want to see more of my creations if you're watching this from spaceport i hope you have a lot of fun with my rover if you're watching this from youtube there is a link in the description down below which will take you to spaceport where you can download this craft and hopefully i will see you around stay safe